In this video we're going to be looking at security policies for A2 ICT. First thing that we're going to be looking at is the deliberate destruction of data threats. This includes threats like hardware theft. If a computer is stolen, then the hardware, software and data will also be lost. Hacking. Once a hacker has gained access to an ICT system, they can gain access to personal data in order to commit blackmail. The spread of viruses. Connection to the internet increases this risk. Antivirus software should be installed on all computers. Denial of service attacks. This is the deliberate depriving of resources for an organisation which means that orders may not be taken. Cyber attacks intentionally slow down or prevent online services which results in loss of reputation for the organisation. Sabotage such as attacks on firewalls by viruses to destroy data results in a loss of business and income. Data theft such as hacking into data to steal company private details which results in legal action against the Data Protection Act. Now I'll move on to the accidental destruction to data threats. Some of these are natural disasters such as earthquake, floods, volcanoes and tidal waves. Fire. Precautions need to take place to minimise the threats such as no smoking and power sockets shouldn't be overloaded. Faulty hardware and software. Software can contain bugs that can cause damage or loss to data. Power loss. No data can be accessed if the computer has no power. There are many consequences to data loss. Some of these include loss of money. If the business loses too much money, then the whole organisation may have to close altogether, which could cause unemployment. Loss of reputation. Organisations will not look good if they cannot look after data properly and new customers will lose trust in the business. Legal action. The Data Protection Act is designed to keep personal data safe and organisations who fail to do so face prosecution. Time. Organisations will have to spend time fixing the system before it can be used again. We're now I'm going to talk about the prevention of deliberate destruction of data. One method is to control access to computer rooms. This means that only legitimate staff can enter the room which prevents theft. Another method is encryption which ensures integrity of transmitted data which prevents data theft. Proxy servers can be used to prevent deliberate destruction as they limit or block access to certain web addresses. This ensures that employees follow the code of conduct and it prevents employee malicious damage. The security of document filing systems means that printouts should be locked away and personal data should be shredded to prevent deliberate destruction. The final methods access rights such as password systems to create a hierarchy of access and create access levels. We're now going to be talking about the prevention of accidental loss of data. To prevent human errors, you can prevent overwriting by put the right protection notch on your disk and make sure that hard disks are read only. You can prevent natural disasters by keep backups off-site and stored in a fireproof container. Use an online tape or disk streamer which automatically backs up the data on a network. Use the grandfather father son security system in batch processing systems such as payroll. Use RAID systems to mirror disks. We're now going to talk about operational or establishing procedures that can be used to protect data. The organisation can screen potential employees to ensure that staff are controlled and that the task fits them. CRB checks can also be done if the organisation is a school. Be routines for distributing virus information and virus scanning procedures, such as ensuring virus signatures are updated daily and distributed around the network when a station logs in, and firewalls should be established. Define procedures for downloading from the internet and the use of portable media. There should be a staff code of conduct 
and the penalties for misuse should be spelled out. Computers should restrict the types of media that can be plugged into the computer. Establish security rights for updating web pages. Websites need to have security so that only authorised staff can make changes and these rights are assigned according to the user IDs and passwords. Establish a disaster recovery programme such as who does what and when including the standby equipment and backup plans such as how often. Finally, set up auditing procedures to detect misuse such as who, what and when. There should be a continuous investigation of regularities and query any transaction of the data that's out of the ordinary. We're now going to talk about security policies and why a company should have one and the factors that should be included in a security policy. Companies should have a security policy because the Data Protection Act put an emphasis on the practice to keep data secure because of its potential for misuse. The factors that should be included in a security policy are prevention of misuse, Firewalls should be used to prevent hacking and appropriate username and password should be used. Physical security measures such as locking the building where the computers are kept and using scanners to get into the rooms. Operational procedures like we just talked about includes auditing disaster recovery planning and dealing with threats from viruses. Disciplinary procedures means that training needs to take place so that all staff are aware of the problems that misuses can cause and the consequences should they be caught such as verbal warning, written warning and then dismissal. Have a code of conduct to set out clearly what staff and can and can't do using the ICT facilities. Log on procedures mean that users should use a mix of lower and upper case letters in their password and change it regularly as well as don't write it down or share with other people. This will create access levels as certain areas should be secure with passwords that only the admin knows. We're now going to talk about user accounts and logs and how they can be useful in securing data. User accounts and logs can be used to do audit trails. They keep a record of who logged on, what files were accessed and when they logged on and off. Auditing is used to identify abuses of the system by authorised staff and also to investigate instances of unauthorised access. Managing user accounts allocates access levels to users. So we're now going to talk about risk analysis, the purpose of it, the factors that need to be included and problems if risk analysis is not done. The purpose of risk analysis is to make sure everyone in the organisation is aware of the security threats to the hardware, software and data held. They also need to be aware of any consequences of data loss. The factors that should be included in risk analysis are Identify the potential risks The Company Information Technology Security Review looks at the computer processed information with a view to identify the risks of the errors and abuse, for example Risks include viruses, fire and natural disasters. The likelihood of the risk occurring should be analysed. Each risk will need to be examined from the point of view of the security and the loss assessed and its likely occurrence. For example, some things such as power cuts are inevitable but explosions are much less likely. Short and long term consequences should then be examined. The aim is to identify the systems which are crucial to the organisation and to look at what would happen if there was a loss of the system. For example, resources need to be directed towards recovering the data. Then the question of how well equipped is the company to deal with the threat needs to be assessed. Organisations will need to look at how well they are equipped to deal with the potential threats and how much they are prepared to spend to minimise the risk. For example, the use of firewalls and antivirus software. There are many problems if risk analysis is not done. In a school, there may be a problem such as staff are unaware who is in college, which could be dangerous if there was a fire. The problem could be minimised by 
Having a backup system which staff could have emergency access to to look up information. The organisation also needs to think about having a disaster recovery programme. Some of the factors involved in this are the cost. The organisation needs to set up a budget for the disaster recovery programme and consider the hardware and software costs. The backup procedures. The organisation needs to decide on a backup policy in order to secure data. They need to decide on the backup method, for example a tape or a disc, and this will depend on how much the organisation is willing to spend and how fast they want the backup procedure to work. The organisation also needs to decide how often backups are made. Backups should be made regularly so that if the system does crash then they can go back to their last backup and carry on from there. The organisation needs to consider the partial or total loss of computing equipment, telecommunications, premises and essential services such as heating. These can be disastrous for the business if these are lost. Personnel, responsibilities and training also needs to be considered. One person should be responsible for backups so that others don't think that they are doing it and then it doesn't ever get done. There should be routines for distributing updated virus information and virus scanning procedures. Procedures for downloading things from the internet and the use of floppy disks and personal backup procedures need to be defined and define a staff code of conduct for using computer systems, for example no abuse of emails. Procedures also need to be considered such as producing procedures for minimising the risks and testing the plan on a regular basis to make sure that it's still sufficient. Establishing physical protection also needs to be done and establishing security rights for the access and setting up auditing trials also needs to be done. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to be notified about when I upload a new revision video then click subscribe and if you want to see my A2 ICT revision playlist then click the box there. See you next time, bye!